for inviting me for this uh, session and and it's something a bit different what the previous speakers presented so actually my my background is coming from the environmental social sciences and and I'm not actually presenting to any specific paper but uh, our research group work from the previous years so we are working with the climate mitigation, adaptation and natural resources governance research uh, with our partners from various countries. And today I thought that I'm actually presenting uh, environmental collaboration, what we mean and understand with environmental collaboration and how it's actually linked to the uh, climate change and also these uh, risks, what the climate change is already having but also creating in the future and once we are talking environmental collaboration these type of collaborative actions for example often those are uh, related to conflict resolution conflict mediation actions but also the responsive natural resources governance and collective actions to uh, mitigate and also to adapt to climate change and in order, once we consider these, what type of processes are environmental collaboration, there are certain descriptions, certain norms in these type of processes. For example, public purpose, inclusiveness, uh, representation, shared decision making, third party facilitation is always uh, or often cr uh, connected to these type of collaborative actions committed conveners, uh, power balancing, deliberative and collaborative platforms. Uh, so, for example, in our, our studies, these are so-called uh, description of the proceeds uh, in these countries which we are working with. And, and then, if you look at the terrorists, for example, from the social sciences or, or political sciences, uh, they connect the collaboration and collaborative decision making often with the reason play based decisions and how those are foundation for the grassroots democracy and empowered deliberative democracy. And yes, we as, uh, as the environmental social science scholars as well, we agree very much with, with these political scientists. But same time, we are also a bit critical uh, because sometimes also these participatory processes might have a risk that those are undermining the, for example, existing governance failures. And also these so-called uneven playing fields, which sometimes also are connected to these type of collaborative processes, for example, between the public, private and people partnerships, where the, for example, uh, you might know these processes where, for example, private sector is in quite in the different, uh, different balance and this so-called uneven playing fields can be very visible in these, these type of processes. But also we, we use this term uh, symbolic violence, which comes from the philosophy uh, pour the art, uh, meaning that it's these type of situations are sometimes quite naive, uh, that when the people, for example, do not have the same resources, so same information or same possibilities, for example, negotiate in, in these type of participatory processes, this can be also the violence. Not maybe in the violence in the physical means, but the violence in the symbolic way. And then, what we also have studied in these uh, processes, how these collaborative processes are connected with the soft security. Yes, we, we do agree that environmental collaboration, it can be very, uh, very well demonstrating these type of processes where the soft security are promoted through the civic skills, participatory and collaborative approaches, but also in these type of social processes to, for example, mitigate the conflicts. And, and these measures to measure, mediate the conflicts, 
which, for example, in, in these current climate conditions sometimes are just creating the situations where, the, uh, where people need the very different type of civic skills. Like the previous presenter was also, also saying that once the conditions are harsh, people also, it's impacting to the, our society in very many ways. Elections or uh, food conditions or, for example, in migration. And in these situations, the environmental collaboration, but also this type of skills to promote soft security comes more important. And, and we have been also working with a large project here in Finland with the youth studies and youth researchers, and which also claims that this climate change, environmental crisis, and support for sustainable transformation also requires the social debate, uh, which in, in actually not only here in Finland, but uh, globally, the youth have been very active in debating. But also, if you look to climate actions, which youth have been very active, uh, often these actions have been seen very critically or, or even sometimes seen that this is the the risking and, and conflicting in our societies when youth are, for example, demonstrative at the streets. But our research, we see that this is actually this youth debate and, and also the uh, demonstrations. Uh, this is the way how youth are showing their ways to act. And it's also important that we see that uh, this demonstration can be a way to, to drive the change. What, what can be called as a transformation, sustainability transformation, uh, which this current uh, climate crisis are also very important. And just to show in the one example from the Finland, Finland have been one of the first country actually to, uh, building up this type of networks among the, the countries uh, relation to this youth peace and security, rec uh, uh, which are called in UN, UN processes as uh, uh, UN Regulation 2250. And Finland was among of those countries for, for built to actually the action plan to how to implement, how to support uh, not only the youth, but youth organization and the state in various levels to to actually to support the youth in, in not only the peace building, but also the various soft security ways. And for example, this environmental uh, collaboration, conflict resolution course series, which we have been in, implementing here in the Finland and among of our partner countries, it's one of these examples how the, us adults can support the young people to uh, with these type of soft security skills. And, and for example, this during the COVID, uh, yes, we couldn't, uh, couldn't organize the face-to-face -face courses, but uh, once you are the innovative, it's also possible, possible to do this type of training and research through the web-based uh, systems. And, and this seems to be year after year, we, we have uh, more applicants to applying to participate in these courses. And, and these courses are also related to the term environmental citizenship, uh, which stops on one of the scholars who have been studying uh, these type of environmental uh, processes, but also these inter intergenerational learning processes. He sees that uh, environmental citizenship is a commitment to the common sustainable futures so that it's not only us as individual persons, but this type of intergenerational and knowledge sharing plays a very important role in environmental collaboration. And, and this environmental collaboration, it's also it's a possibility to co-create uh, social innovations together, something which is not only as uh, somewhere top down blueprint interventions, but how it creates the, for example, space for the youth to create their own innovations 
to support the soft security and their own actions in our society. And one type of uh, this, what we call as the intergenerational learning and knowledge co-creation models related to mitigation and adaptation to the climate change is this uh, uh, model which have been created with the youth and the youth organization, but also different type of uh, organizations here in Finland which the youth could share their own understanding of the climate change, but also uh, together with these volunteer adults to then create the new ways to act in our society. The other example comes from, from Tanzania, uh, where the climate change has been very much uh, changed to, the, for example, agriculture, forestry to certain sectors have been, for example, uh, change the, the climate so that it's very difficult to uh, see when the planting seasons are, are, for example, starting, when you can, for example, carry out the, the fire, fire protection activities in the certain areas in Tanzania. And there, through these collaborative processes, environmental collaboration offered the possibility for these different uh, actors in the rural level to actually create the, and share their own experiences and, and build this type of collaborative processes, how they could mitigate the forest fires, for example. Then one of the, our recent studies, which we are studying here in Finland, is this uh, UNESCO Man and Biosphere Reserves. Uh, this concept of Man, of, Man and Biosphere, uh, it's actually quite old concept and, and this uh, Man and Biosphere Reserve is global network. But for example, here in the Finland, uh, it's gave a very positive example in the in eastern part of Finland, how the different actors, which sometimes are actually having very conflicting interests, how they are actually creating the platforms to discuss uh, shared, uh, shared understanding of the, for example, uh, when the tourist enterprises and the forest uh, sector is uh, functioning in the same, same landscape, same areas. And, and this type of collaborative actions also promotes the idea that uh, when there is the conservation areas, these conservation areas can also give new type of livelihoods uh, for the local people. Of course, there in previously there was a lot of this type of uh, cross-boundary co collaboration between the Finland and Russia, but unfortunately, in this current era, those those actions are are not uh, continuing. But the concluding environmental collaboration is it the rhetoric or key for the soft security? Yes, there is a lot of scholars who are very critical towards this type of processes and participatory actions. And, and yes, I, I agree with them that sometimes these can be what, for example, this, our colleagues who have been studying the Nepal and various other countries, and they are, for example, saying that these can end up to be empty promises or themselves to means to reproduce the existing political orders or powers, or what earlier I was saying, that creating the symbolic violence, or sometimes actually the real violence, for example, what we have been following in uh, one of our case studies in Mexico. But, however, I'm also arguing that climate change and the conflict risk requires the new type of skills and ways to, to act and, and these type of facilitation skills and collaborative ways to mitigate and, and also to mediate the conflicts, uh, these should be considered as a civic skills. And these type of skills, like what we consider, for example, as here in Finland, the first aid skills, which are then, for example, as uh, school trainings and, and the various workplaces, for example, here in Finland, uh, you can get the free, free courses for the first eight skills. And in our understanding also, these type of collaborative skills, facilitation skills, these should be 
considered as well the skills which are in everyday day life we should learn. So thank you very much.